Due to the projector problems in class on Thursday, I wasn't able to show you the actual SAM application. So this video um, shows you the important components of the National Renewable Energy Lab's System Advisor model. The model begins by defining the type of renewable energy system that you're going to investigate, in this case, photovoltaic residential. So I opened up a new file, I selected photovoltaic residential, and the first thing it wants to know is, where are you located? And in this case, um, I would search for uh, Waterville, Maine, and you'll see that USA, Maine, Waterville comes up, and this is the Waterville Airport. And it has information about the location, the time zone, the latitude, longitude, etc., and also some interesting information about degree days. If you want to see the weather associated with this, click on View Hourly Data, and this opens up a nice profile of, in this case, the global irradiance. So this is our resource plotted as a function of date. And you can also view temperatures by clicking on the second bulb. And now we get two plots. This is the uh, average daily temperature, and this is the average daily irradiance. So that might be useful in modeling some of our energy budgets for the homes. After we've selected the location, we now need to tell it what photovoltaic module we're going to use. And in my case, um, Revision Energy quoted a Renee Sola American JC255S-24-BBH uh, module. It is a 255 watts max power module. It has 15.61% uh, normal efficiency. This plot shows you the current output as a function of voltage. And the <clears throat> max output is 255 with a max voltage of 30.2 volts and a max current of 8.4. Um, these temperature coefficients are important because they control how the module performs at different temperatures. And of course, the resource data, the irradiance and temperature data in the previous panel tells the model what the temperature is expected to be as a function of date. So this is a pretty sophisticated modeling tool. The next thing we need to do is tell it the inverter that we're going to use. Remember that the inverter converts the DC voltage from the panel into AC voltage. And again, I used the inverter uh, recommended by uh, Revision Energy. And actually, in this case, I'm going to switch it to a SMA America SB is Sunny Boy uh, 4000 uh, watt faceplate panel. And these operate at about 96% uh, efficiency. Then I go to System Design. And in our case, the revision was recommending nine or a total of 18 panels, nine panels per string. A string is a series of panels and in our case the inverter can handle up to two strings so we're going to put nine panels on one string and nine panels on the other. Now at this point you can see the configuration conditions for these panels. The nameplate capacity is 4.6 kilowatts DC. The total capacity on the inverter is 4,000 so that this suggests that I can put a little more, produce a little more power than the inverter can handle, but I think we'll find that this is okay. And that's because my panels aren't perfectly oriented toward the sun. Um, the tilt on my panels are 30 degrees because that's the angle of my roof. The azimuth or direction the panels are pointing is 135 degrees true. And if I put in these two variables, everything else is calculated, and I tell it that it's fixed. I am not tracking the sun. So I've now specified the type of panel, the type of inverter, and the 
system design. The next thing I needed to do is tell it about shading. So this diagram gives you a pretty good idea of what shading might involve. If you have a number of panels close to each other, they can shade each other. In my case, my panels are flat on the roof, so they have no shading from one panel to the other, but I do have a little bit of shading from the trees in my yard, and to handle that, I hit the Edit Shading tab. And in this case, I am enabling month by month our beam irradiant shading loss, and I know from the survey of my yard that I have 86% transmission or 14% shading. So I picked all of the times in this matrix and I put in 14. You can be more sophisticated in this analysis because clearly the trees don't have leaves in the winter and they do in the summer and the trees will shade the roof differentially as a function of time of day. And so if you had additional data, you could refine this uh, model a bit, uh, but I'm going to leave it all at 86% transmission. The next thing is losses. These are losses associated with the design of the panels. So these describe the electrical losses associated with the panels themselves. This describes the electrical losses associated with power transmission. Um, and these values are typically small and the average annual soiling loss is dirt and debris and snow covering the panels. We're making an assumption that we're going to lose 5% due to various things on the panels. The next is system costs. I am purchasing 18 panels. This is an estimate of the to total price of each panel, um, the cost of the inverter, um, and you add all those up, and my system should cost about $17,000. $600. The actual quote from revision um, yeah, was, um, this is about right. Um, I added in a $3,400 uh, installer margin and overhead so that my total costs matched up well with their costs at about $18,600 or $4.05. Uh, per watt DC. Okay, what's next? Uh, degradation. Um, we need to tell it how the system will degrade in performance per year. We're using half a percent per year degradation. Okay, so that takes care of the mechanical side of the panels. The rest of it is the financial side. So we took care of the jewels, now let's take care of the dollars. Financial parameters. I am going to take, I made a mistake. I am going to take a standard loan, not a mortgage, because the revision energy loan is not tax deductible. Now I'm going to tell it that 70% of this is going to be debt. Um, the loan term is 12 years, and the known rate is 2.99. That's because revision is going to give me a zero interest loan for 30% of the cost. I'm going to use that zero interest loan to carry over the first 30%. And I'm going to get that back after year one when I file my taxes. So this is my total investment. This is the principal. And I don't know what uh, whack is. We're going to have to ask Professor Donahue to review that for us. OK, the uh, analysis we're going to perform for 25 years this is our inflation rate, our real discount rate, and our nominal discount rate. I put in my federal, my effective federal income tax rate. That's after all of my deductions, um, because that's what I will receive in tax deductions um, if I, in fact, had uh, financed this with my mortgage. Similar for state income tax rate, um, and then. I need to make an estimate on how much this will increase my property taxes because if I do have an increase in assessment, I'm going to have to pay some property tax on my panels. Next is incentives. The only incentive for this panel is a 30% federal rebate. It has no maximum values, so it's an investment tax credit. It's a one-time um, incentive. That's it. Electricity rates. Electricity rates are the cost of electricity 
I'm going to assume an electricity escalation rate of 4%. Um, we have net metering in Maine. You pay $10.65 to have a meter on your house. The first 50 kilowatt hours, you only pay for the electricity because the demand charge is covered in this 1065. But after 50 kilowatt hours, you, I pay currently 15 cents for kilowatt hour, and that includes both the demand charge and the energy charge. If we were working in a state that had variable electricity rates, I could fill in this box with the actual variable electricity charges. But Maine is simple, one period, one rate, um, and so the and, uh, and then the thing we can play with here is this is escalation. Finally, we get to electrical load. This is the actual load on my house, and the values are higher than I would like, but that is because I have a hot tub, and I'm going to assume that my load growth is going to stay flat, and in that probability, it's going to go down a little bit um, because of the uh, availability of LED lights. So having filled all of this out, I then go to the bottom and hit the Simulate tab, does a calculation, and up comes my results. The summary panel tells me my annual electricity production. Um, so if you actually want to compare that to my electrical load, my actual load is 9,371 kilowatt hours. Click on the graph to get back. I'm going to produce 5,300. So I'm going to produce five-ninths of my total energy. Uh, okay, what else is in here that's interesting? These are the levelized costs of energy. We'll come back to those when we look at our total analysis. Um, this is my net present value, and the payback period is 13.8 years. Probably the best way to, to see this is to look at some of the other data pages. This is one of my favorites. It's the losses. This tells you the total kilowatt hours that's hitting the panels. Um, and then it peels off the energy as I move from the surface of the panel all the way out to what actually gets put into the AC electrical system of my house. And you can see the shading term, the soiling term, the module losses. This is the DC energy. This is the net DC energy when I handle the inverter. Now I get to my AC energy, and then this is the final AC energy out. I like this because it allows me to catch big errors in my model, particularly in the shading and soiling terms. Um, you can create your own graphs. Um, you can also create your own data flow tables. And what I'm going to focus on today is the cash flow. So the cash flow table summarizes um, the energy production, the value of the electricity on an annualized basis. So each of these columns represents a year. Um, deductible expenses, so this is operating expenses. Um, and deductible expenses, this is the debt aspect of the job. This is the state income tax, the federal income tax implications. And then we come down to the bottom and we have the after-tax annual cost. So this is the 30% I had to pay at the beginning um, that wasn't debt financed. This is <clears throat> the federal rebate, um, less the a little bit extra I need to pay for the system. So in my case, I made $796 in free electricity, but I had to pay $1307 in debt and principal payments. And so you'll notice that for the first couple of years, I lose money on this electrical system to the tune of $50 a month. Um, but over time, that number goes to zero. And then this is where the debt's paid off. And now I really start making some money. So to do that analysis in Excel, click on Save as CSV and you can then import that into Excel. And that's what I've done here. So here's the same data table now showing in, shown in Excel. 
Again, the column headings are years, energy production, value of electricity, and then all the way down here, I've got total cumulative costs and total production. So what I've done in this case is sum these as I go along, sum of C3, G3, I'm summing total production. I am summing cumulative costs. There we go. And I can now calculate the actual cost of electricity. And in the first four years, it's 27 uh, cents per kilowatt hour. Of course, over 25 years, that number drops to 17 cents a kilowatt hour which is a little bit more than I'm paying for electricity right now, although it, it's uh, to be able to lock in your power for 25 cents, for 25 years at 17 cents per kilowatt hour is a pretty good deal. And I come down here, this gives me the total value, the total savings over the 25 years of the project, $21,000. Um, so that's the total savings in electricity minus the total Operating cost, 25 years, 18.14%. That was the real um, anticipated uh, uh, discount rate. And so I can calculate the net present value. And the net present value of this investment is around $2,800. It's a positive number. And this tells me that this would be a good investment, particularly because I can finance the whole thing.